Hello and welcome back to the final episode, I mean video, in this trilogy called Return of the Web Client. So in this video, we are going to look at changes and improvements to the web client in Content Manager 9.4. As you all know, and if you've been watching the videos on this particular channel, I was a big fan of the web client circa version 9.3. That was the one... Uh, update where we had the new colorization and we had a few other improvements such as the forms, the better layout on the search editor and the ability to recognize applications and a few other improvements that really put the web client over the edge. Well, this is another version or another release that I think uh, is going to be right up your alley with respect to the web client. So this video, as indicated in the title, will focus on the return of the web client and I'll try to get a few more so the Star Wars references in there for people who tuned into the middle video um, the administrator strikes back and may or may not have uh, seen a lot of Star Wars references that being said uh, two things from the last video so let me go to my overlay <clears throat> Uh, the first thing I wanted to draw to your attention so if any of you watched the video it looked like I was struggling a little bit on the recycle bin and uh, if you caught that really keen observations if you didn't then let me explain what I was doing as my end user role is I was trying to delete some records and I was right clicking and I wasn't seeing the move to recycle bin option and kind of in a panic I just kind of skipped over that jumped over to the administrative side and continued on with the exercise or the demonstration showing you how you could remove them from the recycle bin now, uh, after that video, I went back and kind of researched what was going on. And yes, I have it highlighted here on the screen. Let me just unhighlight it, but you can kind of see where I'm clicking. Uh, the reason why I wasn't seeing the move to recycle bin was that I was not, or at least that user was not the creator of those records. So uh, you can see this note here that I have highlighted or had highlighted. Uh, users that do not have the records administration permission will only be able to recycle records that they have created, which is why I couldn't see them. I had been practicing and preparing for that demonstration video as the administrator. So of course, everything I right clicked on, I had to send to recycle bin when I went in as the user kind of live and when I was doing the recording I couldn't find enough enough of the recycle bin so that's kind of what happened there so that is the recycle bin tool uh, and again it was a great feature uh, again I wanted to emphasize that the uh, the records will automatically be removed from the recycle bin after your period of time set in the user options which brings me to my second update uh, the user options themselves and that was something I wanted to show you and I forgot to mention in the redesign of the system option tab there is a search now so no more will you see me kind of struggling through well I know I had something around hashes uh, if I type the word hash I can see that hash appears on uh, three tabs the feature tab of course has to do with document hashing uh, potentially the security tab uh, has to do with how it's going to compare and look for document hashes and as well um, there are some hash settings you can do with respect to the document storage so <clears throat> just wanted to bring that up and bring those two little features to your attention before I jumped into return of the web client <laughs> Okay, so for the web client, let's get rid of the full screen or the desktop client. And now this video is all about the web client. Now, uh, one of the things that you can see here over there we're going to be talking about is the manual numbering. So that is relatively new, if not brand new to the web client, the ability to solicit from the user a manual inputted number when creating records from the web client. Next, we'll look at the ability now to drag and drop multiple documents. I think that is uh, pretty impressive. Uh, the ability to view your revisions better, uh, historically kind of on the web client as well. Uh, we'll go and look at the ability to, multi to download multiple files at once and that will give you the option to compress them into a zip file together kind of like if you were a Google uh, Photos user and you're bringing down multiple photos it usually comes down in a um, single file called uh, in a single zip file for you and finally I'll draw your attention to and I'll kind of do this last feature is the custom logo so you now have the ability to uh, insert your corporate custom logo in the page and that's where we'll start this video off today looking at the custom logo. So there I've inserted the information dot and put it up into the 
the top left corner. That being said, let's move on. Let's go full screen so we get a good view and start to see what some of these things can be doing. So the first thing I wanted to show you was the ability to create a new record. And before I even jump into that, there is no more navigation bar. If I click here, we get now the header bar. I forget what they call it. They called it something fancier in the web in the uh, release notes. But now we're looking at a header bar as opposed to a navigation bar. Everything else is the same. You can have your records, new records, checked out, recent documents. You can make requests, general, pickups, returns, etc. You can modify your locations, do some workflows, consignment. So instead of being kind of up and down on the left, it is now a header bar, which uh, I kind of like. It gives you a little more real estate across the top. Um, you know, it's all about this real estate here. We still have a limit of up to three panels on display. You can see my three panels are uh, favorite records, recent searches, and in this case, recent documents. So the first thing I wanted to show you was creating and numbering a record. So I'm going to go to my record, new record option. We're going to create a new record. I've gone ahead and created a record type specifically for this purpose. <clears throat> uh, why is it? There it is. It just took a few seconds longer to redraw. Uh, there's a little Easter egg in this video um, right there. If you know what it is, post it in the comments. Might might increase your chance of winning a rocket book. Um, Okay, so here we're going to do here uh, uh, user numbering. I'm going to call this user numbering like that. I'm going to give it an external ID uh, BC B1666, something like that. Uh, date created, fill out all of the metadata as would be required. Scrolling down to the bottom, let me compress this just so you can see the bottom of the screen uh, right about there. Scroll down a little bit more and I hit the save button. What we get now is the insert formatted number. So it's prompting me with the constant character. It's going to be a year date and what I could just simply do and put in my user defined number. So this is new. Hit the save button and we come back with uh, the new record just created. In this case, numbered one, two, three, four. So that's a great feature and you can see it's got the little uh, record type application, which is the old logo. So there we go. Oh, I gave it away. I was asking you guys to put that stuff in the comments. Oh, well. Next thing we were going to talk about was the ability to um, look at revisions. So I've gone ahead and let's do a search. Let's do uh, registered on colon today, which is a normal search we might do. I have rendition testing, so let's open up this particular record. So remember, with the web client, you click on the record. If you want to view it, you're going to click on the attachment like this. It's going to open up, and we have our new text document. This is the current version of the software. Up here in the top right-hand corner, I can click on revisions, and now it gives me the ability to go back in time and see the previous revision or even the one before that. I can go way back to the original one, and we can see this is the Japanese character document I was using for testing in an earlier video. Uh, revision two has a few changes. And then finally, if I close these off, I'm back to the main one. Uh, next, I'm gonna close off this revisions. <clears throat> and I'll show you the demonstration of dragging in multiple documents. So what I'm gonna do is just go to the home page on my website. You don't need to do that, but I'm just gonna do it to clear out my, my system. Uh, and I have three documents here, first, second, and third. So I did a control click on each of those. I'm going to drag and drop them into the web client. Now, when you do it this way, what's going to happen is it's going to queue them up. You can see the status bar telling you that you have um, loaded them all up. So it's kind of like that document processing queue that comes in the desktop client. Uh, what I can do now is click select check in. It goes through and I want to put these in as I'll just put them in as document twos. Click check in. Now, I like this option before I go too far. I like this one here. If possible, suppress the data entry form. So that's kind of handy. Remember, if your organization and your record types are relatively simple and all of the metadata requirements have been met, then why burden you with filling out information? Uh, so we'll keep that check marked and see if we can get through. More than likely, your organization and your record types require some sort of container. So we, we probably won't get away with a, a smooth check-in process without being asked the container. Clicking check in, sure enough, it prompts me for each of them. Uh, you can see it's picking up the title. I can go through, review what I need to do. I think container is required. You can tell it says here, so I'll just kind of grab my uh, uh, something created today. I'll do uh, title uh, like this, and we'll do demo. 
Do I have anything with a title demo? I do. There's some demo stuff. So notice how I was able to execute a title word search right in that dialog box uh, directly. So that's a, a feature of the web client, which I happen to like as well. Scroll down a little bit further. Lots of scrolling here because I'm working on this window very small. And then I'll go ahead and save it. Comes up to document two, second document. So it's going to repeat this process for each of those documents. Uh, again, I can put in my title demo. Have it do that title word search. I'm going to remember the number. It's 19 forward slash five so that I don't have to do that again. Scroll down a few more times here and click save. And then finally, for my third document, I'll scroll to the top. Oh, it hasn't refreshed yet. There it is. Document type third document. There we go. And remember, I said it was 19.5. So I do have the option if I know my record number just to hit it in directly like that. That certainly helps and keeps things a little bit faster. And do my last one. One, two. Hit save. And now I've registered all three documents. Uh, refreshing my date registered search for today. We have now three, two document, one, two, three documents have been registered. So that's a new feature. That's one of the biggest. Um, how should I say feedback compliment or complaints back that you know power users that are dragging and dropping multiple documents might find that a little frustrating that traditionally it has been one document at a time this will certainly facilitate that uh, that frustration that users may have had with the ability to uh, drag and drop many records related to that not only can you, uh, like I said earlier, I'm doing these a little bit out of order, but not only can you drag in, drop multiple documents, but say I wanted to download these documents. So what I can do is uh, select one. As soon as I select two, what you'll see happens is uh, we get another option. Uh, second, I've got two selected and I've got my first. So there's my three documents. What's happening here on the left hand panel? I like the big bold number. Three items have been selected. So I can grab these three. Uh, I can uh, do search containers for more records. But this download button here that I want to select will download the records into what do you want to do with a document.zip. So it is combining those three records now into a zip folder. I will save as, I'll put them right in that documents for training folder that we see in the background so that we can access it quickly. And document zip, open it up, click on here, and sure enough, there is the zip file that just appeared in the download folder, the destination that I selected. And of course, at this point, if I open it, we'll see the three records. So that's again a great feature being able to drag in or at least select and then download multiple records at one in one action. So that's a, an excellent feature as well. The last feature I wanted to show you in the video, let me just keep myself honest here. Um, back to the view, we got the manual numbers, the drag and drop, the revisions, the zip download, the custom logo. Yes. So sure enough, the last part I wanted to show you in this video was the hit count. So remember what we would have done is I would have come in here and I would do a content search colon spell it correctly helps. Uh, and I might search for dugongs like that. What did I do? Go oh, spell content wrong. It really helps if you do correct spelling. Hit my content search. I'm going to find records, of course, now that contain content of Dugong. If I click on this demonstration database record, um, there's giving me the metadata fields. And just if, for those of you who might have forgotten, you can, of course, expand the properties on the right by clicking the arrow. That hasn't changed in the web client. But this time when I click on the PDF, I notice down here I'm going to just get rid of this message box for you guys because it's in your way. But right here you can see show highlighting. So now as I scroll down through this document, I can start to see where the hits are and there we have dugong 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 so that is the ability to show highlighting or at least hit highlighting on your content word searches unchecking that and you lose the hit highlights uh, let's see how smart it is turning it back on oh it does take a little refresh so that's kind of cool it does go through and refresh it. Uh, so that's another great feature. Again, these are things that I know and my experiences in the classroom and dealing with customers. These are questions we've had. Hit highlights, multiple downloads, multiple uploads. Those three demands have been met in this version of the web client and it's really, it's really great. It's getting better. I'm very pleased with version 9.4 and um, I think you will be too. There are a lot of uh, a lot of changes and improvements that really target niche questions that we've had 
over the last couple of years, especially with the newer versions of Content Manager. Uh, let me go to the final screen, and I will say to you, thank you for watching this trilogy. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have missed the first two episodes, go on back and watch the introduction to the new 9.4, then watch The Administrator Strikes Back, where you can see a little more of the behind-the-scenes changes, and then thank you for watching this particular one, which is Return of the Web Client. As always, if you like the video, please give us a like. It really helps uh, raise us in the YouTube response and search results. I really enjoy that. We are so close to our uh, subscriber target of 100 subscribers, so please subscribe. And again, don't forget, we are giving away a rocket book. All you need to do is be a subscriber to our channel, post a comment, um, and those comments can be used for anything. Praise, uh, they can be used for criticism, uh, and more importantly, if you are interested in other topics or something else you want to see or something I do, you want to see it a little deeper, post it in the comments. It gives me some uh, material to work towards, and I can produce videos that you are interested in seeing. So I really appreciate that. And again, the Rocket Book is, uh, will you'll be entered in to a draw to win a rocket book. So let me go to the blank screen so you can see here uh, what we have coming up on the left. I always have to say this on the left, you will have the uh, link to the previous video, The Administrator Strikes Back, and on the right, you will have a link to our playlist for Content Manager. And also stay tuned for announcements. I'm going to do a video next on announcements. And again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and have a great autumn season.